Hello, it's great to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Do you know why a chicken doesn't suffocate inside its egg? Or why airplanes need those tiny little winglets? Or perhaps, how long could you survive inside a completely sealed glass container? Welcome to the mind-blowing collection episode five, The Diary of a Chick. In 1960, David Latimer, an electrical engineer from Surrey, England, cleaned a 10-gallon glass bottle usually used to store sulfuric acid. He filled the bottle with some compost and planted a spider wart. After watering the plant, he sealed the bottle tightly. Latimer placed the bottle under the stairs in his home where it received indirect sunlight. Occasionally, he rotated the bottle to ensure even growth. Since then, this sealed ecosystem has thrived with almost no intervention. The only time the bottle was opened was in 1972, when David added a little water. But how exactly does a terrarium work, and why can it sustain itself for decades? You might think this sounds exaggerated, but in essence, a terrarium is like a mini Earth minus humans and animals. It operates with the same three vital cycles of life, the water cycle, oxygen cycle, and nutrient cycle. Water is absorbed by the plant roots, evaporates through the leaves, condenses on the walls of the bottle, then trickles back into the soil. Plants undergo photosynthesis, releasing oxygen, which they later use for respiration, producing carbon dioxide. At the same time, bacteria in the soil break down fallen leaves, releasing carbon dioxide for themselves to use in photosynthesis. The bottle is sealed, just as Earth is sealed by the vastness of space with limited resources, while sunlight is a nearly endless energy source. See the similarities? Because all resources are recycled and conserved, a perfectly optimized sealed terrarium can theoretically sustain itself indefinitely. However, balancing conditions like light, humidity, temperature, plant type, microorganisms, and container size is no easy task. In fact, David Latimer's terrariums is one of the most successful ecosystems on the planet. Typically, terrariums only last a few months to a few years before failing due to insufficient microorganisms and incomplete cycles. If left undisturbed, it could continue to thrive for decades, long after its creator has passed away from old age. Now, a random thought arose. How long could a person survive inside a sealed ecosystem? I know it's a weird question, but believe it or not, people have spent millions of dollars trying to answer this very question. On September 26, 1991, eight volunteers moved into Biosphere 2, a research facility that mimicked a sealed ecosystem separate from Earth's, located in southern Arizona of the U.S. It was built between 1987 and 1991, covering 3.14 acres at a cost of $150 to $200 million. Its original purpose was to demonstrate the viability of self-sustaining ecosystems in space, which can support human colonization in the future. Inside this steel and glass structure, researchers simulated multiple environments, including a 2,000-square-foot rainforest, an 850-square-foot ocean with coral reefs, a desert, a savanna, and a 25,000-square-foot farm. The volunteers lived there for two years, but not because they missed home. After 16 months, the oxygen levels initially at 20.9% had dropped to 14.5%, about the same as being at an altitude of 13,500 feet. The oxygen shortage forced the volunteers to slow down their activities, making daily life look like a boring slow motion film. The low oxygen levels disrupted their sleep and even led to some volunteers experiencing comas. Some felt like they were climbing a mountain with every step, while others had to pause mid-sentence to catch their breath. Scientists had to cheat a little by pumping in oxygen on August 1993, but eventually, the experiment ended on September 26 of that year. A second experiment started in March 1994, but was cut short due to the dissolution of the managing company, Space Biosphere Ventures. In both cases, oxygen levels steadily dropped, farm yields decreased, and cockroaches and ants were the only animals to thrive while many other species died off. Surprisingly, one of the biggest challenges of long-term life in a sealed ecosystem wasn't oxygen levels or food, it was human relationships. The volunteers split into factions with tensions sometimes escalating towards conflict. Fortunately, violence never broke out inside Biosphere 2, 
So how long can a person survive in a sealed ecosystem? Although the answer is hard to craft, our estimation suggests that you might last two years if you manage to sneak in some oxygens, and even less than that if you are stuck with an annoying companion. Now, let's talk about chicken eggs. Have you ever wondered why chicks don't suffocate inside the egg? Unlike mammals, which receive oxygen through the umbilical cord, birds like chickens develop entirely inside an egg. The eggshell may seem airtight, but when you look closely, it contains thousands of tiny pores, each about the size of a micron, 25,400 of which form an inch. They allow oxygen to pass in and carbon dioxide to escape. It's estimated that a chicken egg has more than 7,000 pores to help the chick breathe. But the chick doesn't have lungs yet. If you hold a fertilized egg with a few days of incubation, close to a light, you'll see a delicate network of blood vessels extending from the embryo to the eggshell. This is how oxygen diffuses into the chick's blood. As the egg cools and contracts after being laid, it forms a small air pocket inside. This pocket acts like a cushion for the growing chick and provides just enough oxygen to help it break through the shell when it's ready to hatch. Next up, let's discuss those tiny propellers sticking out of an airplane's belly. No, the plane isn't giving birth. Those are called ram air turbines, or RATs. Normally, planes generate power from their engines, or an auxiliary power unit, a small turbine at the rear of the plane. But if both the main and auxiliary power systems fail, the ram turbine will be deployed to generate electricity from the airflow as the plane moves. It simply works like a windmill. Rams are typically around 32 inches in diameter, but on large planes like the Airbus A380, they can be double that size with a power output of up to 95 horsepower. Since 1974, ram turbines have only been deployed 13 times in commercial flights. While they don't cool the cockpit, they definitely help pilots keep their cool in emergencies. Which fact blew your mind the most? Let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more brain-busting content every week. Until next time, stay curious and goodbye.